Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. When RSS first hit the web, no one really knew about it. And then it started becoming a little more popular as more and more people started publishing their own content. There was no easy way to check to see if someone had updated their website unless you went there, you reloaded the page, it took forever. So all these blog platforms started to publish these syndicated feeds, these RSS feeds. It's been argued what RSS stands for. I always go with really simple syndication and I don't care what anybody says, I give full credit to Dave Weiner. Dave is the man. If it weren't for Dave, RSS wouldn't exist. Blogging wouldn't exist. I mean, he's... Dave is the man. Scripting.com, and no, I'm not just being a sycophant. Um, it's just, in my opinion, that's just the way it is. Uh, so, I got a question here uh, from a, a reader out there, and not a feed reader, but an actual person who's been watching videos and whatnot. It says, hey Chris, I was wondering if there's any way to export and import these RSS subscriptions back and forth between RSS reader programs. I just started using RSS readers and would like to export my subscriptions from NetNewsWire for the Mac to my Google Reader account on the web and maybe vice versa. Any tips you have would be appreciated. Well, the answer to that is yes, there is a simple way and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. If you've used a web browser, and let's just assume you have, you may have seen this little icon show up either inside the browser's address bar where the web URL sits or possibly on the page or in both places. This is now commonly known as the RSS icon, the syndicated feed icon, whether it's RSS, uh, whether it's another type of, of feed format, it's basically a way you can click it and then the resulting page, the resulting document could be added to your feed reader. Your news aggregator uh, could be Google Reader, it could be My Yahoo, it could be any portal page that you use. You can add a subscription to it. So then instead of going to a page to see if it's been updated, as long as it's got RSS, they'll let you know. It'll show up in your feed reader and you'll be off to the races. Now the good news is uh, every single operating system, today's operating systems, come with built-in feed readers. Uh, of course, Windows Vista has Windows Live Mail. And or and well that you have to download, which, but it's better to do it than using Windows Mail that comes with Windows Vista. Um, on OS 10, they Safari has supported RSS for quite a while. They've also got Mail.app, which supports RSS. Then you've got the web stuff. If you've got a Google account, you already have access to Google Reader. Instead of visiting all your bookmarks every five minutes, I mean, if they don't update, well, what's the point of visiting them, right? So. What you can do, it depends again on your browser, because Internet Explorer does, does it differently than Opera does it, than uh, Firefox does it, than Safari does it. And Safari is the only web browser really that hasn't picked up on this particular icon. They still go with it like a blue RSS. I think they're trying to make it easy for their users, but it's, it's about time that Safari picked up on the whole feed icon thing. I think it, this is just, it's become too ubiquitous to ignore. Uh, yes, IE7 definitely has a built-in support for RSS. An RSS feed, a feed is just, it, it's, a, it's a page, but it's designed in such a way to be used with special software, a news aggregator. It could be a software from the web, software on the desktop. It's something that automatically says, has that been updated? It has? Okay, what's new? This item? Okay, cool. So that's why you'd want to subscribe to a feed. That's why every blog has a feed. That's why if you go over to my website, any parts of my website at chris.perlo.com, you're going to see this feed icon show up somewhere and it says, hey, you can subscribe to Chris Perillo or subscribe to the Chris Perillo Show. Two different feeds. Why? Well, one, I've got, you know, all my content that I'm producing on my blog. And then the Chris Perillo Show was set up to be a feed that was designed to work with your podcast client. So what do you guys use for all your, to manage your podcasts? What do you use? I'm going to ask. And I'm, I'm assuming most of you guys probably use iTunes. That's just kind of the way it is. iTunes, in a way, with podcasts, is nothing more than a news aggregator. It just subscribes to these RSS feeds. So if you wanted to add all the videos that we're doing, instead of getting them on YouTube, which you can do, you can have them both ways, you can subscribe to the Chris Perillo Show in iTunes. And by the way, we're already in iTunes. Just search for Chris and you'll find us. You can subscribe to it here as well.
the feed is going to let you know when we've posted new things. If you view that feed in your Google Reader, it'll show up differently, but it's the same content that's going to show up. If you use it in iTunes, all the shows will automatically be downloaded and then synchronized to your, well, whatever you happen to be using with iTunes. Same thing with the Zoom Marketplace, anything. Those are news aggregators. So how do you migrate all your RSS feeds? And believe me, I've got more than a few, and I've been doing my best to kind of pare them down, because in the beginning, there really weren't a lot. Now there are feeds for just about everything. So how can you export and then import your subscriptions? Well, leave it to Dave. He came up with another document type format structure spec thing called OPML. Outline Processor Markup Language. Every single news aggregator, well, if you don't count the podcast clients, I w although I, I'm surprised why that wouldn't happen. Anyway, most typical news aggregators, whether it's Net Newswire, Google Reader, uh, NewsGator, which is not to be confused with the Gator spyware, uh, Feed Demon, and those, those three are free. I think most news aggregators these days are free. Uh, I, on OS X, I, I've been using Vienna, and then recently uh, Mail.app, uh, Ponzi loves NewsGator that integrates with Outlook, which I used for uh, quite a few years. Um, it's, if you're not getting into it, trust me, once you get it, once you say, oh, well, it's like the web comes to me, I just say what I want to watch. So, you know, you want to know when we, I upload a new blog post, here you go, subscribe to Chris Perillo. That's all you got to do. You can subscribe to an RSS feed for my YouTube channel if you wanted to. Because there's an RSS feed associated with that. There's the RSS feeds for everything. Feeds. Because sometimes they're RSS, sometimes they're RDF, sometimes they're Atom. I don't want to get into the political situation. Bottom line is, is you can stay in touch with the things you want to stay in touch with. So, in your news aggregator, there's going to be a way for you to export subscriptions. If I go in and I'm going to launch Vienna here on Mac OS 10. It's, it's a free app for Mac OS 10. Uh, but as I said, you can also uh, use any news aggregator. I'm sure people have been throwing out their ideas. Everything, it may be in a different spot, but this is what you're going to want to do. In When you go to export subscriptions, it's likely going to save it as an OPML file. And I'm going to turn that around. Hopefully it, you're able to view that halfway decently. And it'll save it as an OPML file. That OPML file should be able to be imported by any other news aggregator. You should be able to export and import clean OPML. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That is your subscription list. It will keep you organized because in some cases you can organize your feeds by folder type where you have all your feeds in one directory. You should be able to export and import your subscriptions. I know you can in Net Newswire, and I know you can in Google Reader, and that was your specific question. So I know there's a lot of news aggregators out there. Um, you know, I don't know what you guys use. I mean, maybe you use Internet Explorer or Firefox uh, or even Safari to manage your feeds, in which case I think you're absolutely crazy uh, because they're web browsers. They're not necessarily feed organizers. You'd be better off with if you use Outlook using NewsGator. If you use the web, either NewsGator online uh, the Google Reader, you know, any uh, any dedicated like blog lines was another one from Ask.com. Uh, there's a lot of them that are out there, and there's really is there the the a best one? Not necessarily. The best one is whichever one that you like. Uh, you know, and I know there's here's the thing. I, when I open up the chat room, um, everybody's got a, a different opinion, and I'm pretty sure they've already been talking about uh, things that have absolutely nothing to do with what I'm talking about. That's just kind of the nature of the chat room. They all have a short attention span. All the more reason why they need to subscribe to uh, RSS feeds so that when things are updated, I don't mean they all raise, or I'm just saying generally speaking. See, look, someone's talking Mac versus PC. That has nothing to do with it. Feeds are platform independent. That's what makes them so good. That's why we like them. Got it? All right. Can't stop the OS wars from happening. Can't even stop the uh, syndication wars from happening either. No matter, David, yes, you can do it, and OPML is the way to go. You've got the option in both NetNewsWire as well as, and I can launch even, I, hang on, hang on. I've got NetNewsWire. NetNewsWire. Give me a second. I don't have any feeds in here uh, because I, I am, have still migrating things over to the computer. 
on this end. But see, he's got some default feeds, some good feeds. A list apart, Daring Fireball, Mac Megasite, Mac Merc, Mac Minute, Mac Slash, yada, 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 Wired News. And of course, this is on a Mac, so obviously these are default Mac feeds. But I just got nice little buttons. And in the menu bar, if I go up at the top, I should be able to f probably, it's probably under File. Ex uh, import subscriptions and export subscriptions. So there's the net news wire, and then Google will have something similar. So it's it, different programs, you know, different operating systems, but ultimately it's the same features. So anyway, if you didn't enjoy what I was talking about, and if you didn't realize you could subscribe to my feeds, well, maybe you enjoyed whatever the chat was going on about, because apparently that was more important than talking about syndication and RSS. Blu-ray. Oh, can't get through a video without talking about Blu-ray. Has anybody talked about Xbox in the, in this video before before I can finish it out? Can I, can someone at least mention the Xbox 360? Just just to round it out. Thank you. Okay, now we've gone completely off topic. Why? Why do I integrate chat with these videos? Why? Why? I'm asking my ceiling because these guys don't have the answer. Anyway, you can subscribe to Xbox 360 feeds too. Like Major Nelson, he has an RSS feed. We all have RSS feeds. What's yours? Uh, have you subscribed to mine? Let me know. Maybe we'll do some, uh, you know, syndication cooperation got like tens of thousands of people subscribed to my feed. That's a lot of people. Okie dokie. My email address is chris at perillo.com. And uh, you feel free to email me questions. Maybe not about RSS because I think we've kind of beaten that topic to death. About anything related to technology. I'd love to see if we can tackle it. And even if I don't understand what's going on, well, hopefully there's at least one other person in the chat room who is on topic and would understand what was going on. Uh, you're also welcome to join us in the chat room. And it doesn't matter what we set the topic as, if you hadn't noticed, People are going to talk about whatever they're going to want to talk about. The conversation. It's like a big group of geeks sitting in the same room, and each one of them is having various conversations. It, it's it's just a, that's the nature of chat rooms. But we're a friendly bunch. I don't think it got too uh, heated in there. Uh, it was pretty nice. Everyone was civil, right, for the most part, even though we talk about very passionate topics or topics that evoke passion, I should say. Anyway, you're welcome to join us anytime, day or night. We're streaming out live video and audio 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.